Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you saw my last video, we attempted to get the transmission into the car. I already put in the clutch, put in a lot of the accessories for the transmission and everything as far as the maintenance items, but I couldn't get the transmission in there. And then after I realized I couldn't get it in there, I forgot all about the heat shielding. So if you guys see other people do the same swap and even on the OEM W55 manual transmission IS is they have like a heat shield from the factory on that tunnel. Uh, on the automatics, we don't have that heat shield. So today I've got this heat shield from DEI, Design Engineering Incorporated, and they make a lot of this custom heat shield stuff for people that do these modifications. So I picked up some of this right here, and this is pretty expensive. This was like $48 right here just for this piece. I read a bunch of reviews on it, and this seemed to be the best product out there as far as quality and adhesion and everything and actually keeping the heat out. So today I'm gonna end up removing the header, getting this in there, and I'm gonna attempt to get the transmission in. So stay tuned. So DEI right here makes a bunch of products as you can see on this list here from this box. I got the one that was 21 by 24 inches which is perfect for what we need in the tunnel. The next biggest size was quadruple the size and I didn't really need that. As far as overall quality goes, the aluminum backing is pretty thick on here and on the back side we have the adhesive and then like a little thin maybe quarter inch foam to keep the heat out. Uh, but overall, I think this is going to be a good product as far as getting it in there. I read a bunch of reviews on some of the cheaper stuff on Amazon, and it wasn't much cheaper. I think for the equivalent size on Amazon, the cheaper models or the cheaper options were still like $35 to $40. So I figured $48 for something that had really good reviews is well worth it. So in order to take the header out, all we have to do is take the engine cover off right here, take the intake pipe right here off. You could pretty much leave the box because you have plenty of room on this area to still work even though the box is here. And just unbolt it, unplug all your O2 sensors, and pretty much that should allow you to kind of wiggle it, get it out of the way, and then pull it out of the car if you have to. I was able to get everything out. I unplugged all the harnesses off the wall, off the little clips and all the little wire management down here. I ended up breaking a few of these black ones, but luckily those are the ones I have easy replacements of. I have a whole stack of those, so I'll just replace them when I put it back together, but that's no big deal. I couldn't lift that thing out as you can see on the video because it's getting blocked down there by the crossbar and the lower cross member bar, the suspension bar. So I'm going to have to jack it up, take that off, and then once I take that off, this thing will come right out pretty easily. So right now it's getting jammed between that bar and the edge of the engine, so I have to remove that bar so it can clear. Right, I went ahead and removed that thing. All it takes is six bolts, so the 614s, there's one here, one here. That's a 17 right there. I took that off. Once I took it down, I put the bolt back on here just to make sure that this thing doesn't fall down. The caster arms right here. And then two more bolts over here. And over here, that's just a mirror image of the other side. So we were able to pull the exhaust out from this direction. As you can see, when I was struggling to pull it from the top, I was hitting the engine here, the engine mount, that cross member, and this side over here. But without those things in place, it actually pulls down easier this direction than it is from the top. So when I put it back in, I'm gonna try to do it from the top to see if it is doable. But definitely from the bottom here, especially on a lift, it's much easier to pull it down from the bottom just because there's nothing in the way and you can kind of pull it, especially with no transmission in the way. So now that we got the header out of the way, we'll go ahead and start sticking it up here. So before I even stick it on, I already prepped this whole area. I cleaned it with some super clean just to get rid of all the old grease and everything. I cleaned all the black stuff up there as far as the coating and everything to make sure that there was no contamination and oil under here, especially on the two JZs that leak a lot of oil. This car was a huge leaker before I got it. I ended up fixing it on one of my older videos and getting rid of all the oil and I cleaned everything under 
under here with brake parts cleaner but i've been driving for a while so it's accumulated a lot of dirt and dust so i went ahead and cleaned it with super clean once the super clean dried up i put some alcohol on here just to make sure that i had a good place to actually mount it so if you measure the actual transmission i think it's only like 20 to 23 inches is where the actual transmission is the rest of it is like the bell housing right here and then the shifter tail housing so we want to just insulate the area where the actual transmission is in this area it you could go right past the actual uh shifter and everything but i don't think it's needed that far back it's probably needed to right about here where the shifter starts just because that's where the transmission is and that's where you want to keep the heat from getting through the firewall or through the sides in the tunnel and into your legs all right for the install what you want to do is before you peel the adhesive backing you want to basically put it up here and just mold it by hand to exactly where you plan to actually mount it so you want to make sure it clears on this side before the cross member back here and then up front you just kind of want to follow the lines of the body and you just want to bend it and mount it to the shape of the tunnel and once you get to this side you just want to get as much as you can up in the way here kind of tuck all these edges and uh, I actually bought a roller to help me kind of roll this stuff and get it all in place so that's what you want to do first before you peel it up here where it curves up I might have to cut some reliefs right here just to get it to fold up and get to the curve of the bell housing but aside from that uh, you want to get a mallet also to make sure you can hammer some of this stuff in place once the rolling's done you want to use the mallet to just hammer any areas you want to make sure that you get adhesion All right, we got everything in there. Took a little bit of while to get everything to stick correctly. And then I had to hammer and roll all these areas right here with all the screws and everything above. As you can see, the adhesive didn't get very good contact there. So you have to actually hammer in all those little spots on both sides. But pretty much we got everything as good as we can. You can see I started on a straight side on this thing. And just due to the curve and the stretch right here, it ended up being kind of diagonal over here. And it goes into here. So right now it kind of hangs over. So hopefully once I tighten it down, this is going to be flat. Once I could get this forked down to spec. So that way it shouldn't be a big issue there. But other than that, we got it in there pretty good. You can see on those edges that I had to trim, there was some bare fiber. So I used some fiber just to clean up all those edges so those fibers wouldn't hang out. I do recommend putting a mask on and safety glasses so you don't get these fibers in your face and breathing in these fibers. Once you start cutting them, all those fibers get everywhere and it gets into your eyes and your skin. This is fiberglass and my arms are starting to itch right now just because I didn't have long sleeves on. Oh man, that was a big pain in the ass to try to get that thing lined up as a single person. Luckily, I have a lift here, but I was able to lift it up. I kind of had to wiggle the back, wiggle everything, kind of line it up as much as I can, get it past the trans tunnel and everything. And then I slowly crept it in and I actually had to turn the crank a little bit just to move the teeth to make sure everything lined up. And eventually, as I was wiggling it, it popped into place through the clutch. So now I gotta actually wiggle it in. It's still got 
all the way through to get through the pilot bearing and everything but luckily everything's lined up now so i can start getting some of the bolts in and actually just slowly tighten it down to pull it in so i'll go ahead and do the opposite bolts the four corners and then do as much as i can to try to pull it in that way i can bolt down the back cross member and then hold it up and bolt it down all the way and torque it down So I was able to bolt everything back on for the bell housing, all the 14 millimeter ones on the bottom here, and then all the 17 millimeters across the top. So for this one, I decided to put those two on the top that I didn't on the automatic. I left those off just because on the automatic, it was a pain in the ass to get to. On the manual, you don't even need to drop the cross member here. You should get a long extension. I got a big old long extension. If you need that same extension to do your project, check out the links down in the description. But I got it on Amazon for like three of them that are pretty long. I just connected them on and I was able to get all the way up there and tighten it down. And I was able to torque everything to spec. So the torque settings are 28 for the 14 millimeters and 53 foot pounds for the 17 millimeters all the way around same with the starter bolt I haven't put the starter in yet but on my next video when I put the drive shaft and everything on I'm gonna go ahead and put the starter and everything back together as far as the cross member back here if you need the torque specs it's only 10 foot pounds for these nuts and 18 for the ones into here so it's a very low compared to other bolts of the same size on the chassis so you see on my W55 here, I have the speed sensor right here, which on the automatic conversions, you don't use the speed sensor just because the signal is different on the automatic and it uses the ABS sensors, which is a better method anyway. Just because of the different gearing of your differential and the transmission is better to get your speed from your ABS sensors. So this wire used to go all the way here and it used to go here and there was a bolt before it went up over here to the firewall to the wiring harness and everything. So we don't use that bolt right here. And then down here was that crossbar that connects to the exhaust that I'm missing. This is now a discontinued part so we can't even get it anyways, but we're missing that that connects over here to the exhaust pipe just as another brace. For overall wire management, I was able to use the bracket off the automatic right here that goes to this bolt. It was able to sit right here perfectly for the reverse wire that goes right there into the reverse plug and then onto the transmission. So that's a pretty easy, convenient spot right there to put the wire management out of the way. Aside from that, I was able to put the inspection cover back on right here. I connected the ground wire over here. So everything for the bell housing and everything and the install of the transmission is pretty good now. But right now I'm gonna call it quits right now on the install. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end. This quick video on getting that transmission tunnel insulation in and actually getting the transmission onto there and getting everything torqued down as you can see as a one-man show this is a very big pain in the ass but I'm fortunate to have a lift in my garage and I can do this myself if you guys were really doing this at home on your own or in your driveway without a lift I would really recommend getting some wheel cribs or making them out of two by fours and then get one of those low profile transmission jacks that kind of lift up using a ratchet and it goes all the way to the ground. So that way you can lift it in and you can kind of slide it right into place and bolt everything together and also get some friends to help. If you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to your channel to stay on top of this project, any other projects I'm doing in the garage, the IS300, the Sienna, or just anything I do. Remember guys, for all these projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.